This is Rusty Roeder. Uh, what's on my bench? Uh, I've not gotten done as much as I was hoping to on the Chevelle. I know you guys have not seen the Chevelle. It's uh, Wife's Choice 2023. Turn you here. You can see the body is cleared. It is very dusty, but the clear leveled out. Yeah, you see how deep black that is. What a shine. Uh, there's only one problem. Somehow, in my clear, I made a fatal mistake. And that was, uh, I used a little bit of leveling thinner I had left. And I forgot uh, before I had done my metallics, I had stuck the same uh, pipette down in there to get it out. And it had metallics in it. So now my clear coat has metallics all through it. It doesn't look too awful bad now that it's all cured. Uh, there for a while I thought, oh, it's going to be horrible. But it's kind of grown on me. Uh, I won't be bringing it to Acme. It's not that good. But uh, it turned out really nice. I mean, I was surprised. I upped my dosage, so to speak. So you guys know, like, when you're using the leveling thinner, it's 10 to 12 drops. Uh, per whatever you're using uh, as far as the amount you're using of paint or clear or whatever it may be. Uh, MCW, you know, you're mixing it 50-50. Uh, and then, you know, a few drops of the hardener in on it. Sorry, guys. I'm... There we go. So I thought, well, I'm not getting enough leveling thinner in it to where it's leveling out really good and smooth uh, to minimize the sanding and blah, blah, blah. Well, when you know it, lo and behold, the car that really should be stripped and resand, you know, sanded down and redone, there's hardly any, you can see the flake in there. It's not bad, like I said, you know, but don't mind the glass. It hasn't cured yet. I'm going to have to go back through with a toothpick and, I may have to pull it out and clean it and put it back in and get it set right there is where it needs to be. Okay. See if it'll dry good. Anyways, as you can see, I mean, it's as smooth as glass almost. I mean, there is fine, very fine orange peel. Not for this being a shelf queen, not worth all the work. I mean, it turned out really good. My... Black attracts dust, like some fierce. It's so shiny. Look at it. It's just glaring the camera. There's the emblems. There's the back end. The hood is drying. Uh, we got our vents in the hood. You can see. Uh, I did find a minor defect in the kit. Uh, the core support right here. You gotta sand it down a little bit more so it sits down below that lip because it keeps the hood raised up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and uh, cut that down a little bit and I'll touch it up with some gloss black and that should blend in pretty good. That'll, that'll let my hood shut down all the way. But we're gonna wait, uh, wait for a while before we even attempt that. Uh, I'm telling you right now, this is an excellent kit. Highly recommend it. But be mindful that to marry these two together, this it's a super tight fit. You almost you have to put the engine part in first, and then work the back end down into the body. Uh, if it's that tight, and also kit engine, I didn't modify anything there. Uh, the alternator almost needs to be put in after it's already in there. Uh, same way with the core support, but you can. It shows the instructions, core support, or the radiator goes in first. Uh, and then you marry them together. But it, it's so tight, this doesn't want to fit in the right. So I know when I go to put it together, it's probably going to bust it up again. This is the second time putting it all back together. You can see I did go crazy, and I detailed the whole engine compartment. Fuel line, fuel filter, vacuum lines. I added a uh, 
back in advance to the distributor. See there, uh, scratch built the coil. So this is right there where it's supposed to be, but it's not the kit one. And then uh, we ran the alternator wires. Uh, we ran the electronic choke wires from the carburetor. They're hard to see. They're down in there. Let me see if I can get it closer. There you can see them down in there. Blue and orange wires. And then we uh, we just followed the path of the wires that were molded in. And we added our own wires. Drilled the proper size holes so everything's nice and clean. Uh, we added a chrome cap to the master cylinder. Uh, it doesn't have power brakes. It's manual brakes. Even though we got disc brakes. I was going to change the uh, master cylinder. I'm kind of glad I didn't because anything bigger, it, this alternator gets in the way of the wheel wells going in. So I think what I'm going to do is concentrate on getting it together where it fits good. And then we'll, we may have to reassemble this back on here uh, to the uh, chassis and see how that does. Uh, Another thing I'm not sure about, I'm thinking I might have needed to gloss this. So we may need to come back through and gloss coat this little rib right here. I won't know until I get it all together. I can't remember from the first time I married it together, but I think I do. Uh, so be mindful that when you paint, if you change the body color, paint this the body color. This is like that little pan that's underneath your grill and your bumper. Uh, that would be body color. I mean, you could black it out if you want to, I guess, but you know, this whole car being black, it's, you know, it is, uh, there we can see the interior color. I went with a darker Brown, just looked better. Uh, the dash is all detailed. There we go. All the decals are on and in place. Uh, no decals left. Also guys, what I was talking about, you know, we shaved all the chrome trim off the wheel wells, the rain gutters. We did the infinity type glass. You can see how that turned out right down to the glass. I like that look a lot. Nice and clean. Uh, we still need to clean our glass after it cures. Uh, but this one is going to need quite a bit. So I'm thinking about just popping it out and clean it up real good. And then we'll uh, revisit it. So we'll put that down. Let me turn this around. Here's the steering wheel. It's all ready to go. Tacks on there. Uh, all the brakes and rotors are mounted to the wheels. Wheels are detailed. We got our Brembo decals on the calipers. Our center caps got decals. Uh, I'm going to put a little drop of resin over that and cure it. Same with all the other ones. So we got about an hour's worth of work left in just little details. Headlights are in the uh, grill. The grill is blacked out. Just waiting for the glue to cure out all the way. And that's the decal in the center. I black washed it and then I came back with a, uh, an acrylic paint and then, you know, just wiped across the chrome and cleaned it up. That way we got that real deep dark black in there. Tail lights were just blackened in. If I can get a hold of it here. Well, let me just show you. Around the bezels, those are ready to go. Our strip underneath the hood. Our wiper blades, we still got to paint the wiper edge of it. Our mirror and our rear view mirror. Our air cleaner and our door handles. I still got to clean those up a little bit before I put them on. And that's really it. Like I said, I mean, it's just as smooth as glass. I baked it in the uh, dehydrator for 12 hours at 122 degrees. That seems to be right where it likes and it levels good. The body has to be polished out. It looks, see that blue in there? That's where that came from. Is when I did uh, that one car. And this thing's just as soon as I clean it, it just attracts dust to it. That's all you're seeing, guys, is dust. I wipe it off and I'll show you again. See? 
No, there's no blue down there, so I don't know where the blue hue is coming from. You see very little orange peel. The thing that makes it the worst is it's got the little specks, but it kind of looks good. Overall, man, it's nice and shiny. And once I get it all cleaned up, the glass cleaned up, and we'll get the uh, all the excess glue removed and dried and, you know, all the all the goodies. Uh, it's just going to be a quick video. You know, it's, it is what it is. You know, things don't always work out. Uh, this model went together so great, which is what's really ticking me off. And then I knew the glass would be somewhat of an issue. Uh, not this much of an issue, but we'll get it cleaned up here and I'm going to show you real quick. If you're fast with everything, and you don't just wait for the full-out dry time, you can get all your glue back off the glass without harming the glass. It's better to use hot water, especially when you're using canopy glue. Uh, I like to use that. That way you, you get a second, third, fourth chance of getting your glass in there. Just a little bit of a process of cleaning it all back up. And, you know, then I always like to go over and polish the glass again. And then I set my glass in place. And then I just put little drops of canopy glue until it, you know, sucks in there and cures. You pretty much see right there. Now it's all cleaned up. I'll polish it and then, you know, we'll put that back in there. But uh, we want to wait for the front window to get good and dry. Uh, we'll uh, clean this off. The way I do that is the back of my knife blade. Now there is a chrome trim. If you're not familiar with this kit. For the back glass. It goes in from the outside. So be mindful of that. Uh, and it's this little piece right here. And I'll put it in place and show you guys. It goes in really easy. But we don't have chrome trim on the rest of the car. It's very fiddly. It'd be easy. I, no, I didn't break this one. But it would be very easy to break. I broke the chrome that goes in underneath the hood. And had to glue that back together. Anyways, it pretty much just sits in there like that. You know, it, mine's a little crooked. But there's a little recessed area I'll show you down in the body here right here this little lip that this sits in uh, and depending on how our glass goes in and looks we may have to add that i don't mind it because i got a little chrome trim back here and i got the cozy wings that are chrome and then we got bumpers so the little chrome highlight it's not horrible uh but since we deleted everything else around here i try going for that infinity glass look which I must say that pulled off really nice. Uh, I'm going to do it again on another one. I've got another car down the road that I thought about doing that too. I thought it looked really good because the real car has it done. Uh, so, you know, when you're trying to replicate as much as you can, it's, it's nice to have options. Uh, but this chrome trim, it would sit in there very well. If, if you're a big chrome guy, uh, Normally, I would do the chrome trim, but this was just an experiment along with, you know, a model that is my wife's favorite uh, to try to do that infinity glass. And I think we'll get it. The glass sits in here pretty good. It was just my shaking around and jumbling around that caused everything to come loose. So we just start over on it. Uh, and that's about it, guys. Uh, we're wrapping up, getting ready for Acme. Uh, I'm getting super excited. Guys, there's going to be tons of vendors there. My second decal guy, which is my club president, is going to be there. STS uh, decals. So definitely, if you're going to be there, go check out his booth. Uh, he's got a lot of great decals. And he carries a lot of other aftermarket parts, too. Detail masters, stuff like that. So you may find some things that you like and you need uh, going to his booth. I know Splash Paints is going to be there. Flipping fantastic. I heard that McGill won't be there this year, so that's kind of a bummer. I was looking forward to getting some of his parts. Uh, but I'll, I'll get a hold of him via phone, and uh, I'll get him, get him to give me some parts that way. Uh, let's see, who else is going to be there? Oh, MCW Paints. 
I think Detail Masters himself is going to be there. Model Car Roundup will be there. Uh, just to list a few that I'm aware of. I think there's like 26 others that aren't listed even on the, the list of vendors. Tons of vendors, guys. Uh, the few that I just listed are like main parts type vendors. Uh, the rest will be your models, of course. Uh, the one resin company that's always there, uh, they will be there. Uh, I'm going to check out some resin again. If it's too high priced, then we'll just keep on going because I'm not paying that kind of money for a resin body. I'll wait and I'll get somebody 3D printed or something. A lot of new releases coming out. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen some of them. I think I think it's Mobius. It's one or AMT is bringing out the, uh, it's the Comet or the Maverick again. Oh, there's a new fire truck. Uh, the 63 F100. It's kind of like a camper on the back of it. 65 F100. I think it's 65 for Mobius. Uh, and Mobius is getting ready to release the 67 through the 72 Chevy. Don't know when. I'm sure it'll be a year or two down the road before they get them all out. Uh, but I'll be looking for their announcements on that because, you know, that's just a rumor. I don't know for a fact. I've not seen them, uh, but I've heard. So it's pretty cool. Uh, they're bringing a lot of these kits back that you couldn't get, like the 63 F100. You go find one of those vintage you're paying over $200 for. Or maybe you can get a good deal, but you're still going to pay probably close to $100, uh, if not more. And that That's even for like a rebuilder. Uh, because they've never re-released it before. It's only been the one release. So now this is the second. I know it's going to sell up quick. So I'm definitely going to get two or three of them. Uh, and a couple of the 65s. Because uh, I have big plans. And then now since these kits are being re-released. My big plans that would require a lot of money to do. Get to come to life. Because I can now buy it for you know, 24, 26 bucks, whatever. Uh, it's still quite a bit of money for a plastic kit. But. It's better than paying hundreds and then you know now it's vintage hacking up a vintage kit to create what you want to create i don't know if you can see these or not i got the little door locks painted uh, remember i drilled i don't know if you remember or not i drilled out all the door locks the trunk lock to put the mgsf aftermarket tumblers basically is what they are in so once that's all done and we put the handles on, we'll put those in. Well, take that back. I'll put them in before I put the body on because I'll glue them from the back side. Uh, and then, you know, it's just basically final assembly. So, we'll do a little mail call. Even though I did a short for a shop out or a shout out, she deserves a, a better one. Uh, this Jess from Scale Model Snail. Jess Golan. Terrific artist. Terrific model builder. Uh, she's using 3D printed parts as well. Uh, it, you know, combining them in her build or making it the whole build itself. Uh, if you're not subbed to her channel, she's on all four platforms. Go check her out. I'm sure it's the same name. Scale Model Snail. Uh, been watching some of her videos and getting caught up on a few others, like In the Garage with Zippy. Uh, Don's Garage, uh, several others. There's a guy. I can't can't remember his name. It was his channel. He's a huge Star or Star Trek fan. Okay, uh, and his channel is called Trek Something. But just search USS Enterprise, and you'll find one of his videos in there. He's building a replica. Of the USS Enterprise in 125th scale. It is, it's massive. I mean, he's nowhere close to being done with it, but he's gotten like the main bridge and a few of the other deck levels done. He's got the the out some of the outriggers that go out. It's like 16 feet. So the big circle part on top that'll be like 16 foot around. That's how big this thing is. Uh, I don't know if he's just doing that part of it or if he's doing the the whole lower part too, 
Uh, we'll see because I'm following him along on the adventure because it is cool. And I think it's like all built out of like foam board, cardboards, card stock, and things like that. And he's got some little figures that he puts in there and shows, you know, the size. But it's 125th. So it's like our cars, you know, we build. Uh, I don't know if it's Trek Life or Trek. Just like I said, just search it on YouTube. Uh, USS Enterprise, and, and one of his things are going to come up, uh, and, and, and give him a follow, and give him a thumbs up, comment on it because it is insane. I I couldn't even build if it, my garage was wide open, I could probably build that, and uh, that would be something I would like to do. But they have nowhere to put it, so it would be really useless. But kudos to him, uh, he is across the pond somewhere. Uh, I don't think he's here in the United States, uh, but definitely go check it out if you if you're a Star Trek fan. Uh, I think most of us as kids we watch the show. You know, it's cool to see somebody do something like that that's a big enough fan and takes enough interest and pays attention to detail. Uh, I'm, I think it's all going to be lit up too. So you, know, you just got to kind of watch along. He's he's not too far into it right now. Uh, I think his videos are about a month apart. Uh, so he's probably been working on it for close to six months, a year, uh, somewhere around there. But man, oh man, is that cool. Uh, so go check him out. Uh, shout out to everybody uh, from you guys that are going to Acme. Uh, you know, give, show them some love when you're watching their videos. And if you can, like I said, you can make it down there. Come up, say hi. I'd be glad to talk to you. Uh, should have my shop cards with me. If you haven't gotten one, I'll, I'll get you one. Uh, and all the people before that sent me your address through via email, I'll be getting, as soon as I get back from Acme, I'll be getting all those sent out uh, to you. Uh, I know just with next week, I'm not going to have time. I got too much stuff to do. So we'll see about getting another video out. But uh, I do a, a little video right there, uh, maybe Wednesday or something like that. Just put it out real quick. Uh, give you an update where we're at. So, you know, basically I'm going to have this one done. Uh, that frees up me 100% of the time to work on J's. All the parts are in for the Pro Street group build. Uh, so I'm good there. I still got a little finagling to do and figuring out. Uh, but we're, like I said, ready for primer on that one. And I'm almost out of primer. So when I go to Acme, I'm going to get some primer. But uh, we got... We we got we got a lot done on Jay's. Uh, Jay's is very close to all the crazy stuff like this, all the detailing, running all the wires. A lot of it's going to be steel braided hoses uh, and lines like the heater hoses, the radiator hoses, uh, brake lines to a certain point, uh, fuel lines and stuff like that. All be steel braided. The uh, other stuff would be normal. Electrical part will be wiring like this. Uh, so we're real close to getting that part of it done. And then uh, we'll be really final assembly after that as well as this. So another, I would estimate probably another good two to three weeks on days just to be able to take my time, do stuff nice and neat and clean. Uh, and we'll have it done. I am going to build another Chevelle. And I say that because I know I've mentioned all these other builds. I've seen the Chevelle many, many times, and it keeps drawing me back to it. And for some reason, it just keeps popping up. And it's the same picture. And there's not, or same post. It's not a lot of pictures. There's a picture of the engine, so it tells me what it's got. Uh, and a couple angles of the car. And I've got the tires and wheels. I've got the, you know, I've got the kit. Uh, it's using the kit engine like we do with this one. Uh, we'll have to modify a little bit like we did with this one for the uh, tires to fit, but we're going to build it because it'll be, I, I'm, I'm liking these quick builds. It's keeping me fresh. It's, it's honing my skills. Uh, and Jay's is just a big build and it just requires a lot of tiny fiddly parts. And I have to really take my time with it or it'll just be a big mess. And we don't want that. Uh, we've got this last year at Acme. 
I got this from Jeff Metzger. Uh, JPS Customs. You guys know him. He makes fantastic wheels, fantastic engines. Uh, this is LS7. Uh, we have a Camaro coming up that we're going to build also that uh, that's what this is going in. And it'll be a 69, just so you guys know. Uh, tires and wheels are yet to be uh, determined. But I saw underneath the hood of this one, they did have the Corvette LS7 motor in it. So we'll detail this all up like it's like it's in the real car, but it's got kind of custom paint. Definitely got it's pro touring. Uh, we're just not going to do all the suspension and crazy hacking stuff to it. Uh, it'll be a little bit more modded than what the two Chevelles will be in. Uh, so on and so forth. But you guys will get to see it. So we're at our mark here. Uh, so remember, thank you to all my past, present, and future subscribers. Uh, you guys keep coming in. We're getting close to that mark where we're going to reveal what first place prize is. And that's that, you know, a thousand subs. Uh, and we'll start showing all the other stuff. We'll get more defined on the rules and how to enter and all that. All that kind of great stuff. So look, we're looking really forward to that giveaway. Uh, I don't know why I'm giving so much stuff away. My loss is your gain. Uh, so... Make sure you're hitting that bell notification so you know when my videos come out so you don't miss any of the info when it does come out. Uh, and that's just pending on subs. That's not pending on time frame or anything like that. Everything's still sitting here. Uh, it's ready to go. Uh, I just got to package it up. Paints are set up here behind us uh, that the person will get to choose from. All brand new, all sealed. And, you know, I have a vision for the first place car. It's just my vision, but everything that I would put into it is what you're going to get raw, unpainted, unglued uh, to be able to build this uh, beast of a car. And uh, that's it, guys. That's all I got. Uh, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about the Chevelle uh, dubbed wife's choice. Uh, that's for this year. I'll be able to get it done within this year. I'm kind of getting a little ahead of schedule on a few things, so it's really it's going to enable me first of the year to really kind of dig into the diorama uh, and then have all these builds sitting here that I can just work on while I'm waiting for stuff to dry or come in for that one. Uh, and that's it guys. Uh, shop cards. Uh, if you're interested in one, you just send me an email, uh, send your mailing information along with it. And uh, if you have a shop card, uh, I'll give you my address and we can, we can trade them stickers for a shop card whatever you want to do uh, i don't have stickers right now until the new ones are made and i don't know when that'll be now uh it should be here soon but i'll keep you guys informed so until then you guys have a great weekend get some modeling in send me some pictures of what you're working on always glad to see that stuff uh you want to see something particular here behind me just got shouted out uh, blow it up so you can see it better uh, all these kits are unbuilt behind me and around me, all underneath there, uh, all up here. You guys just got to let me know. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, open it up together and take a look. So until then, guys, this is Rusty Rotor. I'm out.